<laughs> hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Classics of Cinematics. And join us all as my co-host. We got boss, we got boss, we got boss. Yo, yo, we here with the monumental gangster flick. This film comes from 1990, man. This is the King of New York, directed by Abel Ferrara. Uh, mm-hmm. And in this film, a psychotic drug lord leaves prison bent on sharing his profits with the poor, but finds that the streets are tougher than when he left and that there is no way of washing the blood from his dirty money. Mm. <laughs> Which is weird. They call him psychotic. Uh, maybe he a little seemed, neurotic, he, but yeah, but he seemed pretty, uh, pretty <laughs> meticulous and well thought out, you mm-hmm. know, premeditated. And I like how I'm psychoanalyzing them without knowing what them terms fully mean. That I just right, said. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded good though. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what definitely warped me, man. I was definitely too young watching this. So yeah. shout out to my cousin Flintstone, man. We watched this like every other day, uh, one summer. <laughs> it's just one of the things we had on tape. Mm-hmm. And um, But this cast is crazy, so we got Christopher Walken playing the notorious Frank White, a guy so notorious he made Biggie um, Small's lyrics. Matter of fact, that was Biggie's alter ego yes. on the rap sense. Yep. Um, we also got Wesley Snipes in this. We got Lawrence Fishburne. Don't call him Larry. Um, we, yeah. got, <laughs> <laughs> we got David Caruso. We got Joe D'Elia. We got Anthony Redman. Um, Victor Argo, Steve Buscemi, um, Giancarlo Esposito, mm-hmm. Janet Julian, Vanessa Angel, Joey Chen. We also got Teresa Randall. Uh, mm-hmm. Where did she go AKA to? AKA Girl 6. Yeah, she mm-hmm. hasn't been in stuff in a while. Also, uh, she got terribly abused in... Um, <laughs> um, Jung, jungle Fever. No, it's not Jungle Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill, yeah. yes. This is the flavor that we savor. <laughs> we also got uh, Paul Calderon, man, also another OG actor. Harold uh, Perrineau. Without him, Keanu uh, wouldn't be able to beat the Matrix. That's true. <laughs> yes. We got Leah Shang. Uh, we got Freddie Jackson. Yo, yes. my man, Freddie Jackson was up in he here. He was grooving, too. Wow, wow. Dream it's home. crazy, man. We got a lot of actors in here. Wow, Robert Lozardo, he was in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roger um, Goonvere. Goonvere. You, you would know him if you see him. Yeah. There's a lot of people in this film, yes. man. And it's crazy if you know anything about that time. Like, a lot of these guys weren't household names when this no. came out but they would go on to be man you know that's crazy man absolutely like, i mean yeah. even in the casting like we made the joke about lawrence fishburne they cast him as larry fishburne mm-hmm. yeah you know what man I'm and this thing like i said man at the time um i will describe it this man um it's one of the things rewatching is definitely in that crime noir gangster film definitely. era but something about this and i think it was abel ferrara's touch this feels like the art house gangster film you yes. know like it, it yes. has a lot of artistic flourishes and and strange choices that were used in telling the stories as well as you know more traditional action scenes and and, and gangster bravado scenes you know that that happen in this man but But, you uh, know and to your point i mean because of the time that this came out like before this film most of our gangster movies were more like the mob style like mm-hmm. you know your your godfather or you know um yeah. you know mean this street, precedes like um goodfellas i think it, um, it does maybe just barely it you does. know just but barely because this this film was able to you know elevate the bar in, mm-hmm. the, in the gangster film realm but also created a, a new lane for itself it, it this is a standalone film you watch this film it it, it doesn't hit like watching the godfather or anything mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and, and i feel like because this film was made in the way it was that's why in goodfellas they had to kind of push push the boundaries a little mm-hmm. more and come come a little harder because this one i mean it's it's rock solid with the concept yeah. it's almost like you're watching like a fever dream of gangsterism you know like, like yes. I said, it's, 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 it's really wild it has a different uh wild tone to it but but let's get to it man yeah. um th- this cast is crazy you can't and, you can't ignore that you know and, and, and that's the thing that's what makes this film so good is because of this cast and not just the acting um from the from the actors and actresses but these characters i mean you get i mean ultimately you get frank white i mean this mm-hmm. dude if you were to like put don Colleone and tony montana in a blender in your glass you would have frank white i mean this dude he he, he he's just he's so cold and callous his demeanor but he's meticulous he's mm-hmm. he's so smooth with it but dangerous like he's yeah. he's the quiet like, one that you need to worry he, about he's, he's a guy that you would think was like the nicest guy in the neighborhood like if you lived next to him and didn't see anything that was going on it's like oh he's, he's a great guy but then when things have to Until get to that level him. it's yes. it's crazy man yes he, um, 
Um, one of my favorite scenes when he goes to Artie Clay, um, this other gangster, because essentially he's just got out of prison. They don't say why he went in, but it's got to be drug related. But, you know, and he's kind of going around and getting reestablishing himself and he hits up Artie Clay and I love that scene because yes. it shows how dangerous he is because we're looking at him like this this is the gangster <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying and then he goes to Artie Clay and gives the infamous um you know you got fat while everybody starved on the streets yeah. and then Artie Clay basically telling Artie Clay like get down or lay down and then yeah. Artie Clay bucks back like basically implying that, that, that I'm gonna have you killed he's like you think you're gonna live long enough to see this and yeah. man my man flips the switch don't even give him a chance to blink, turn around. Dumps the whole clip. Bop, 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 bop. My man was dead and he's still <laughs> dumping on him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, then, and then it's so great because he's talking to Artie's goons. I mean, um, I feel like they did that in Scarface, though. That was a little ripoff of Scarface. Yes. Remember when uh, when they went to um, my man, the, the whole um, horse that picked it on fire? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because then then he's, he's talking. He's still shooting his man. Yeah, he's he's dead like, on the Getting tired of being treated this way? Come see me at the plaza. Yeah. I got work for you. But see, this wasn't the first time he did this because even when crazy. when he's on the subway making out with his girl, the stick up kids come in there and they're like, Yeah, give me your give me your watch and your wallet. And he's like, Oh yeah. And he flicks his jacket over. He's like, Yeah, what about this? And he's got this like this this swa it's like swag with him. He's bouncing around, dancing all the time. But, but I like Pulls how he, I like how he it's business to him though. Yes. It's like he, even though this guy was employed by the guy you just killed, you know that it's hard to find good help, and you know that that man it's not like a it's not a family loyalty. It's yes. just a business loyalty. It's, so so you know this guy he's still going to be in this yeah. game and he needs work. Well, he and did, he's been solid. So, he did the same so, thing. So you need a job. He did the same thing to the stick up kids. He was like you know after he he made it clear I'm not the mm -hmm. one you want to rob. He's like you know what come see me at the plaza I got work for you. But then we also have Jimmy Jump who's played by Lawrence Fishburne. He is the most <laughs> Most over the top goon that I've seen in 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 any gangster movie mm -hmm. like up until this this movie like and now when I watch other movies that came out after this like I'm I try to compare and contrast because I mean he's just so he's so off the chain he's, he's chewing the, up scenery in he's this. the one that you yeah. don't want to cross paths with like Frank is the calm cool he's the opposite end of the spectrum yeah. he is the loose cannon yeah. he's gonna talk shit to you he's gonna he's cool <laughs> he's cool as a cucumber but then he'll he'll, he'll shoot you in, in a heartbeat yeah. you know what I mean that, that's the thing that got me watching this as a kid like it was so fun like me and my cousin watching his scenes we would be winding them just, just especially in the beginning, man, when he's picking up the the drugs from uh, Tito and oh, he crosses yeah. him, it is it, it's, it's crazy, man. Just it, like and he's so charming. Tito's totally distracted, lets his guard down, mm -hmm. and then boom, he got the two twin burners, and that's his thing, man. I love that, that his character just has a like like this probably was one of the most fun role roles for. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne just to bring this character to life because it looks like he leaned in with it like he's oh, got the cause street swag added to it they and said, all of that they man. said officially uh, he wasn't supposed to play that role but then um, the director once when he, he like he was he, he was kind of like not begging but he the was insisting like yo let me play Jimmy Jump I want to play Jimmy Jump and he walked in exactly how he presents himself in this film and, mm -hmm. and the director was like yeah man you got this you gotta beat us you see how he can go from hot and cold when he's in the in the chicken restaurant because yeah. The, the the guy is just I mean he's being a douche he's mm -hmm. like man uh, what are you doing in here and so Fishburne is matching his energy but then soon when the guy the the, the cashier bucks on the kids he's like man you don't talk to them like that Go he, and give he was them kind money of a jerk everything. though in that he scene was. when I walked when I watched it from the beginning I was like he was the first one that, that kind of was even the way he comes in and not intending to pay for the meal like like it's wild man I he's, think he was going a, to until the dude was mean to the kids I don't know bro but that, then that again I mean that's, that that's the thing too I mean he, he is a bully I mean he, he bullies a, up on he's everyone a jerk, but, but I'm, I'm going on the cast tip man mm -hmm. I, I like what victor argo brings to this man because because yeah. basically uh frank got frank white um they they this seems like they've got history so whatever happened in the past with him getting frank white um, he feels a, like he was arrested feel, and convicted yeah. but for whatever reason uh frank white is out earlier frank white should be in there for life so so victor argo feels like he's failed and basically he's he's the police detective that that was main line in this mm -hmm. case yeah and and some of these other characters are police officers i love uh wesley snipes well, we and get, caruso get, yeah and they, um you know being his guys yeah, but they're like his rebels without a cause they kind of hit like like batman and robin whereas argyle would be kind of like commish the commissioner chief yeah 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 and it's interesting because he realized it's just one of the things where the system has failed or yes. frank white has so much money and influence that He's above the system, and they eventually, 
like things happen, more stuff happens. I think it was after the Chinatown hit, which was crazy, man. That was. Did awesome. they decide that? We've got to get this guy out of here, man. There's, there's no other way, and they yeah. it's vigilante justice, man. Well, so they decide to actually hit them and, and 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 kill Frank White, you know, and that leads to some interesting stuff. But I like him being there, like like he's a guy that that like you, you feel like he has a good heart for for. Yeah. I don't know what else he's done, but but it's also he, he wants to protect the city too because he sees what. You know Frank's influence is doing out there, exactly, man. Exactly, but he's still trying. He's trying to do it the right way. He still he he puts the badge first, keeps his conscience mm-hmm. clean. But then, like I said, where you get uh, Wesley Snipes, it's in, especially Dave Caruso's character. They're like, you know, if if we can't get him the right way, then vigilante justice is the way that it goes, and that's what really works for this story. For me, is this dual perspective. Like you mm-hmm. get you get the gangster side, but then you get the cop side. But where where the cops messed up is like you said they, they're putting the badge well, down and yeah. trying to step into mm-hmm. into the gangster realm yeah. and, and, and I, but I think they convinced them Caruso and uh, Fishburne um, um, you know uh, Dennis and uh, Thomas those are their, their yeah. names because after that happens and this is like yo what are we going to do now and, and they convince him and he's just like alright do what you got to do but just be careful and, and it goes disastrous it goes disastrous it goes disastrous well, it's also one of my favorite scenes in that because um Essentially, they um, set up one of their own guys to, after the the, the Chinatown hit, mm-hmm. to, to go make a buy, and during the process of that, that's when they make their move. Yes. They, they send in the hit squad, yes. and that goes bad for them. It goes really bad. They've got casualties, man. There's... Oh, my man. My man <laughs> holds on to the door. They drive, and yo, they must be going 60, yo. and he won't let go of the mm. door. And then that's when Fishburn rips his mask off, and he Ooh. realizes, he's like, oh, it's a cop, man. Yeah, it's the... Frank speeds up, and then <laughs> leans over, hits the dang on fire hydrant. Mm-hmm. Smacks my man face. I mean, dude, he's still stuck there. He's <laughs> like, nobody rats for free, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the story, it's a bit large in their life that's why i said it, like parts of it feel dreamlike because if yes. you, in real life some of this stuff you know you definitely aren't getting away with but it, it, it's great though this, this is great to see it all play out because of our cast the, the direction direction the, the actors involved i mean it's, it's kind of a, a tragic story in a way too it man. Is. I was, yeah i was just about to say dude when we get into this third phase and everything kind of comes full circle it's really cool because the way that the story is layered and mm-hmm. builds us up and then we find out that you know frank white even though he is the ultimate gangster he's doing bad things with good intentions i mean he is like robin hood in a sense yeah. you know what i'm saying because we find out all the people that he's taken out he yes he's taken out all these these crime bosses and you would think you know before you you realize what's really going on that he's taken them out so he can corner the market be the only one left you know biggest shark in the tank but that it was wasn't part the case of it. it was part of it mm-hmm. but it was more because he didn't like how they were moving like the one guy he was he was uh prostituting underage women mm-hmm. so he was like no you got to go the other the the one guy had like a, a refugee camp going on and then i can't remember what he said the dude did in chinatown but there's all these people they were like they're doing it, wrong it, by it breaking it, the law but then they're also they're 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 adding to the, yeah. the evilness by the way that you know what, what they're doing what with I always power. think about it like like with, with Scarface even it's like you really can't choose when you want to have a conscience and right. I think that's what's right. going on with Frank White he chose to have a conscience but it's like dog you've already done so much you can't like like you ever heard of um my man General Buck Naked um <laughs> no, I, <laughs> basically this is a real story Liberian Civil War Vice series Vice blew up off of this um, documentary it had a mini documentary uh, called The Cannibal Warlords of Liberia so you got this guy General Buck Naked who during the wartime was killing thousands he said he might him and his crew might have killed 20,000 people in this war um, and child soldiers beheadings Mm. cannibalism like and, and this guy now guess what he does he's a church pastor oh so, like so I feel like dead president. I feel like Frank <laughs> White was trying to get that same kind of redemption but it's also like like I don't even know how um, General Buck Nick is still cooking right now he's, yeah. he's he got congregations Jeez. he's got a congregation full of people that he probably killed so I think Frank White was going for that type of redemption but at the same time it's like everything you've done it, you can't escape point. it. Yeah. Like, e- see, e- either the other dealers remember what you did to them, or some other concerned citizen. Well, real, and the, the police cops, remember. The p- police remember. <laughs> yes, you're right. But it's see, like, that's the thing. Like, it's, it's like, like I, I'm, I'm with you 100 percent on what you're saying. But he he seems to always never lose sight of what he did. Like when when he's having the the final conversation with mm-hmm. um with uh, Victor Argo's character, the, the the police chief guy. 
he tells him like he's like man i'm tired of you the cops like i'm tired of you doing this stuff and thinking you're gonna get away with it he said bro i spent half my life in prison i didn't get away with anything and i never killed someone who didn't deserve it mm -hmm. so in his mind he's still doing yeah. The right thing. <laughs> He's just doing it in the wrong way. Yeah, you can't just wipe that away. You no, know, you, nah, you can't. You you can't. Got, and and like I, even even Tito though, think about it. Is even though Tito was grimy, you did snake him right off the rip. When we yes. meet them, that was a call okay. from from Frank White. Like, like this that is was a call. Like this is one thing. Like, <laughs> like you know, to your point called. about this being dreamlike, because you know, everybody seems to to be fully aware that Frank White is pretty much just a, a an over exaggerated stick up kid. Him and his crew, they're mm -hmm. not going to pay you for your drugs. They're going to Take what they, they want, do what they want. What then they're going to party afterwards. They don't even want to deal with him, but he's there, so but you got to address but they, him. But they <laughs> keep dealing with him. He's like, you know what I'm saying? But you got to, like, he, he, like, the thing about Frank White, like, he, he, if he feels like a Debo. He's he like, is. Like, we, we don't have enough power to get him off of here, so we got to figure out a way to figure out a way to to deal with him diplomatically, and it and it just it don't be going good I mean, for these guys. And the thing is, you is that you like, it's, he's so wild because like he he, he, he does he too, does his, he does his street shit, but then like remember when he goes to rub elbows with the higher ups, he tells the guy he's that, hot. He's like, yo, I'm gonna run for mayor. <laughs> no, I'm gonna run for mayor. It's like, dude, are you kidding me? Yeah, you know, and everybody it, knows like, you the biggest dope man. In you, town you kill him. every you kill all these people take all they dope and then you want to fund a children's yeah, hospital yeah he was bugging bro like that, that's what is like, wrong with you like, like like i look at this film like he's <laughs> he's not someone like to to look up to or aspire to be most of these no. films you know <laughs> definitely show you that but he was totally deranged that his part that he played in all this i'm like bro you nah, can't erase what you've done you yeah you could try to do this philanthropic route but we know it's like el chapo suddenly be yeah. like i want to start a, 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 my own make a wish foundation like yeah. bro we can't yeah do i'm gonna fully fund it too with all this and, dope money and then, and then, and then <laughs> and there were some politicians that were glomming on to him because he could probably possibly get them cash but most of the real serious people they're like nah bro i can't even be seen talking to you everyone wanted to stay away from <laughs> like, him. but like you said he just bullies up it's like you, you push him away yeah, he pushes man. back he makes his presence felt yeah but you know and another thing that really works for me with this film is the setting dog like the we get a first class seat through the underbelly of New York, you know what I mean? Like if from the opening scene when he gets out of jail, he's riding through the, you know, riding through the hood and the limo and everything. You see the graffiti on the walls, yeah. the the fire in the barrels. It's also it's just time, man. We're, we're probably yes. like maybe like four or five years into the the crack epidemic. Yes. Um, the violence in 1990 was ridiculous, though. 90s yes. was real violent, a lot of bodies. So it's it's an interesting time, man. It's just a chaotic. It is. Um, time, but a lot of things are happening, you know, historically. You know, and then, like another thing that really like just set the tone for this film for me is this: this the opening scene after the ride through, when it just shows him staring out the window, and you see the buildings reflecting off the glass. It almost has that like top of the world look, like he's looking down on New York, plotting a way to take it over. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that was just, I mean, great imagery. And another, you dude, the subway scenes. You know what I'm saying? That, like, I've never been to New York, but I've seen you know enough movies and stuff know a couple people from new york and the subway is such a major part of new york lifestyle transportation and everything and the fact that they didn't overlook that they they give us uh, multiple shots in the subway shit even the ending mm -hmm. takes place in the subway because it is such a, a major part of new york living that you know it just as far-fetched as this movie is it kind of gives it that that sense of reality mm -hmm. at least with the atmosphere that and, we, we are we in we also get a couple of action scenes that i thought were done really well you know like that that like um especially like the it, like it somewhat feels a little over top like the chinatown hit and like Love the, the fact that he runs through and none of his crew gets hit or at all even though these the the, the um the, the 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 chinese gang is putting up a Dude, big a resistance. Everyone's got fully died. autos. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, I don't know how but, many but, casings were but, left but in But none that of Frank White's people, uh, he doesn't lose nobody in that whole no. shit. But no. then also, I do like the raid when they uh, yeah. decide to, to just kill him and they go in. Like, this is after he got the Chinatown hit and they're partying, which was a crazy scene, man. You got the schoolie D. Am I black enough? Yeah. Playing, but but it's kind of sped up because because I looked that song up afterwards and it don't hit the same at a slower speed. To and be they honest, got that. like you know, they get, it's, it's it's speed up. I guess to symbolize mm -hmm. to that they're all getting they're high all off coke. And, yeah, and man. what really works too is that blue hue that yeah, they got. Like yeah. it's, it almost looks like a it looks like a club, 
but in Terminator it also 2 looks like an abandoned <laughs> building. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah. like the way they, they they did that was dope. Yeah, I'll, I'll expect the Terminator uh, the walk. I know, on. right? Because <laughs> that, that blue you. Sarah Connor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. You know, it all yeah. culminates in, uh, back on the train with the showdown. I think that was a really dope shot. But but also, um, you know, we see our police chief, it, like, you know, after the raid that he advises guys not to do, but he still co-signed them to do it. And that goes bad, man. We lose people. Um, you know, then there's the hit at the funeral. Yeah. And um, I, I kind of felt bad for those cops. In, in a, like, like it's weird for me to say that. Damn, I need to wash my mouth out. But mm. the, yeah, um, I, was, I was like, you know. But, but, but it's like they're <laughs> just doing their job. And they're, in, 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 like, for, it felt like they was really trying to help the city. Because Frank White is not good at all. In the, for the, for yeah, the people I'm, in this movie, like you look at what's been done and what he's doing, even though he has these, um, you, you you can't be killing people to raise money to to save the orphans. It's just yeah, that just is I mean, weird. Like you said, it's just. I mean, I'm with you 100. You know, this is this, <laughs> he's it's good, go. he's good intentions, go. yeah. but going about it in completely mm -hmm. the wrong way. And then they kind of fall to his level by doing what they, they do. did, and that goes if bad. Fire man. with fire mentality. Well, that's the yeah. thing. So so I, then so then it causes my man to have to. He's got. He's the last. He's like, I gotta end this. I I, do. I, I co signed it, so I gotta take responsibility at, for at, it. At that point, it's mano a mano. Mm -hmm. Frank Frank lost all of his crew in the raid, and then the cop. All of them got killed, mm -hmm. you know, in the raid as well, except for Caruso, who then got killed. It's got to suck if you get killed at a funeral. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, just think about that. I mean, that's they don't got to take you far to bury you. I mean, no, that's true. That's true. But then it was funny. Like, it's not funny, but, yeah. dude, we were just talking about, we watched this scene before we started. My man just rolls up. Okay, granted, there's a lot of black limos at, at the funeral, so I see how he could kind of blend in. Rolls right up. Plugs my man with the shotgun. There has got to be hundreds of cops there and no one can get down there to him there i mean i thought you had to do like physical training to become a cop how come they're all running so slow or nobody's even jumping in the car to get chase them out maybe of their there. feet like, hurt because they were all wearing hard bottoms because it was a funeral yeah it was not weird, like bro. running and sneaking. It, it looked cool but but in high side i'm like man this is wild man but, <laughs> yeah. but but i did like the final showdown with, with yes. frank and um yes. and argo's character because like it's, it kind of plays out like a wild west shootout showdown kind of situation and then he's just but see just a testament of Frank's character because I mean dude he got plugged in the belly and you don't even know you we have a feeling something happened to him but he still walks right right out the subway oh, he for a cab. It's like, <laughs> but he's just chilling like he's I mean, setting that cab he's probably still blowing yeah, up but too. his face didn't even like he didn't even look like he got shot no his eyes weren't watering or nothing I'm like dude I mean you could be as tough as nails, but if you get hit in the belly, you're gonna feel it. I don't give a damn how many sit ups yeah, you do. Yeah, and I, I think it's just a. Uh, um, they, I think even the chief knew that he might go down doing well, this. Well, the chief and was also, busy dying on his own. And also, uh, <laughs> Frank White was just content with his fate, and it, and it, it ends, you know, essentially like that. But it is. It's, it's a solid watch, man. But you know, you know, before before we conclude it, you know, what I'm saying. We got to talk about this music, man. The the score by, that was presented to us by uh, Joe Delia. Mm -hmm. Dude, great job. Like, you know what I'm saying? This that opening that opening score, it's like it's so chilling, but it's such it's a perfect representation of the demeanor that we get from Frank White. Like that if you just listen to it, if you don't even watch the movie, you get a feel for this character, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then also we get the live concert from Freddie Jackson. That was oh, dope. Oh, live. Yeah. He was grooving. I've been waiting. <laughs> dream yeah, on. Dream on. <laughs> For a better day. <laughs> it was great. And there's funny. another part, dude, that I do like when they go to see that play. I don't know what the play oh, that was. that was crazy. But my man, is, you just hear like, bah. He said, like, man, all ghosts, I'll kill him again. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, yo, I, I, yo, I think that was, I think that was a guy from, um, I could be wrong, but I think that was a guy from, um, from um, Harlem Nights that was in the beginning. Oh, wow. I okay. could be wrong, though. I got to look okay. this. Maybe not, bro. Let me, I got to look into and then, this you know, see if he's on here. And not for nothing, you know what I'm saying, outside of, you know, the score and, and awesome Freddie Jackson concert, you know, the, this was the first film that where they heavily integrated, like, gangster rap in the soundtrack. You know what I'm there saying? There was a little bit. Of, yeah, Schooly D, man. Yeah, Shout Schooly out Schooly D. D. Yes. Who was considered to be one of the first, you know, gangster the rappers yes. on you know, record just because of what he was rapping about. Yes, you know? and you know, it was really cool because I had the, the 
double disc special edition DVD. On disc two, you get about a half an hour, 40 minute long documentary where they just, they it's, it's all Schooly D. He's, he's talking about his life, his upbringing, what, what brought him into music, what, what led to him making, you know, being so heavily involved with the soundtrack, making the music for, you know, this, this mm-hmm. movie and everything. So that was, that was really dope as well, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause then, I mean, when you look, you know, after this, then we, we get our films like, like Juice or, you know, any other, you know, more urban style films. And, and, you know, you expect to hear some hardcore music because it's hardcore themes and, and hardcore things going on, um, on, on the screen. So you want to hear the music that coincides with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, overall, I, I really do like this classic, man. It, it still holds up. I mean, even yes. though, you know, when I'm older, you know, and I got more um, discerning eyes and more experience, there are some things that are a bit goofy, but but it's still an interesting story to watch, man, on a, you know, just because, like I said, man, it feels like a the art house gangster flick, man. Yeah. Like, like, there are some elements, I think, of it that are, you know, Godfatherish, you know, especially the score and, you know, some of the... You know the tones that, that it takes, but then, he, like like I said, man, the 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 amped up action scenes, and and some of the other stuff that's going on here just just it takes on a it, like there's nothing really else that's that's like it, man. No. You know out here, you know. So and it's because it's crazy. it finds a way to give you cover all its bases. Like you said, we get the mob element, but we get that like that gritty raw street shit. But then you also get the side of the law. You know what I mean? So like depending on whether you, you when you were young, if you were a cop or a robber, you know what I'm saying. This movie can be appealing no matter what side of the fence that you're on. Mm-hmm. And like you said, I mean it's it is a film. So, you know, that's the thing. This is not, a, you're not watching a documentary. So the, the over-exaggerated parts of this film just makes it that much more entertaining. And it's high rewatchability. I could, I could have this on in the background at mm-hmm. any time and, and still at any part, whether beginning, middle, end, to sit down and watch it till the credit, credits roll. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, man. I think we can end it on that note, man. Make sure you check us out for the next episode of classes cinematics man follow us on at classes of cinematics on instagram subscribe to this channel man subscribe to us on spotify wherever you listen it and maybe um visit the merch store man get some merch you know what i'm saying Stop drop us off a little bit man if you yeah. can't buy a shirt buy a sticker man it all helps buy man it all builds up man you know however you can support us man because this is work man you know <laughs> this takes a bit of effort to get this done for you guys every mm-hmm. week man mm-hmm. but um yeah you can also check me out at monkey blood on twitter and instagram this is bobby blockbuster you can catch me out catch me at instagram on instagram at bobby blockbuster he's about to say you can catch him out in the streets i was <laughs> king of the mo <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I feel like it's a couple dudes running around here trying to claim that now. I they, know they rap songs, know. man. You might have to get in line, but I know, right? I'm searching <laughs> alias DMs in my thing now. Oh, you think you tough? <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, man. We out of here. We're gonna catch y'all next time. Peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs>